So for this game, I've decided to combine um, two different expansions, and it's actually three. I have the African Warlords expansions one and two, and those are modern expansions number 32 and 33. And then I've got the Australian Nation Pack, which is expansion number 28. So I'm using the African Warlords locations, hostiles, missions, and objectives in combination with the Australian Nation Pack. So any of the cards in this game are either from the core set, from the Australian Nation Pack, or they're from the African Warlords expansions, which gives us a nice wide array of new things to see. And we'll get into those as we encounter them, as always. And we'll go ahead and go over the mission and the objective first, and then I'll introduce the soldiers as we uh, put them into play. Now our mission is working with locals. It's got a resource of uh, 49, gives us 11 turns on the timer counter. Um, the objective is at number 5, and the loadout value is minus 3 on this one. Now our objective is to save the elephants. Now this is a nature location. It's got an environment of a hot four plus a lot of these Africa locations. In fact, everyone that I remember seeing so far has the environment hot. The winning condition is to eliminate the hostiles, and you have a time limit of two turns to do it once you activate that objective. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to draw my starting hand of six cards for my player soldier, and we'll see how this goes. So I only drew for one location, and that's okay, because that'll get us started. And that location is a nearby river. It is free to play. It's also nature. And look, this one, in fact, does not have environment hot, I guess because the water is cool. So I'm going to have to start off by crossing the river, looks like. That's all I've got. I'm not ready to take a discard and draw just yet. It's got an entrance cost of three, and that's going to cost me to get in. So my player soldier is Bailey. Now, Bailey costs 14 points. He's got six health and 11 loadout and a uh, plus one in hand hand. But he's also got the aggressive and the aggressive two skills which are new with the nation pack for australia i believe now aggressive one says when you declare an attack you can discard one action card to add two to your attack roll and then aggressive two has a prerequisite of aggressive and this one lets you when you declare an attack discard one action card to add one to your defeat cover roll so those can be really good to uh, finish off that final target or the uh, problematic target that you're facing. Now, his move is only two, and his cover is only one, which kind of uh, reflects his aggressive nature, I take it. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with him. Oh, he's also carrying an M203 carbine M4. It's uh, got a load out of five. It's a pretty heavy gun, and that's because it's got a grenade launcher attached to it. Um, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. And that grenade launcher is, uh, it's got three grenades. And it's different than the F1 grenades that are in the uh, Australian arsenal, which another soldier has. We'll see in a minute. And he's also got a drum magazine. I really like this card because what it does, it lets you put three of the ammo tokens for the weapon it's attached to onto that card. You treat it as normal ammo, except when the gun when you roll for reload, when you roll to reload an attack roll, this lets you um, freely reload the ammo on this card. And so you don't have to spend that action to reload. Now, the gun has uh, six ammo, so the other three would normally, you know, those would take the regular action to reload the gun. But the drum mag lets me ignore that three times. And we're going to start by playing... Oh, I also gave him a hydration pack. Um, what that does is once per turn, um, not once per turn, but up to six times. You can do it one time in a turn. And you can do it six times during a mission. You can either draw one card or gain one hardy pot counter. And that could come in effective. And then he has the desert acclimated skill. Now the desert acclimated skill and the hydration pack are from the Warlords expansion. And what that does is before you roll um, for an environment hot check, you can discard one action card to add three to your roll. This is a skill that you can purchase for any soldier, and any soldier can discard the card to add three to any roll. So that's also in the Africa expansion, but I expect it to be very useful in the East locations as well. So that is how Bailey is kitted out, and we're going to activate him first. I'm going to play the nearby river, 
It's got an entrance cost of three, and its hostile value for our squad, which is 49, is only two. So I'm going to play the nearby river, and then of course draw two hostiles. The heart, the first hostile is enforcers. They add one to the defeat cover roll of all hostiles. There are two reticles, and they are uh, two XP value, so that meets our uh, draw for that um, location. And then I am going to go ahead and activate Bailey. Now I have a move out card, which lets me move without taking an action. And because my move is one or two rather, and the entrance is three, I'm still going to have to discard a card. I've got an advanced card that lets me um, add three to my movement value when I'm paying the entrance cost to a location. So I can either do this by discarding cards, or I can go ahead and spend one move action and play the advance to uh, add three to location. And it's an either-or kind of thing at this point. So I am going to move into this location by reducing the cost um, or adding three to my movement value. And that's going to use one of his actions. Now for my second action, I think I'm going to go ahead and declare an attack against the enforcers, I'm going to use this uh, the M203 carbine, and I'm going to make a burst attack that'll let me roll two dice, and of course I only get to affect one enemy with it. But we're going to go ahead and give that a shot, no pun intended. Now for this gun, at range zero, I need a six to kill. I've got a six and a seven, but I needed a three to get past their cover, and I only got a two. So that is going to suppress one of the enforcers. And that is all of the actions for Bailey on this turn. Now I've got a couple of non-player soldiers, and then I've got one squad soldier this time. Usually it's the other way. I have one non-player soldier, and I'll take a couple, three squad soldiers. But I really want to get some of these skills into play. Now, one of my squad soldiers is um, Stuart. Now Stuart's got a cost of 10, but he's a really good um, uh, non-player soldier. He's got the AUG F88 rifle, and he's got a first aid kit. He's also got 4 XP, which is good, because none of these other care, uh, soldiers had a starting X, any starting XP. And he's got the Australian skill mate ship, and a couple of the soldiers in this squad do. Now, what that says is when this soldier's downed, all remaining soldiers gain plus one on all attack rolls during the next soldier turn. Um, ideally, I don't want those soldiers to go down, but if it happens, I'm going to get some kind of a benefit for it because now I've just got some ticked off Aussies that the hostiles are left to deal with. Now he's got a move value of three or two rather and so it's going to cost another card to get through. I am going to play, I'll go ahead and discard the steady aim to pay that movement cost and he is player, so non-player soldier but soldier number three. So he'll move into the location for the cost of one action. He's got three actions, though. So we're good to go. Now, the F-88 rifle has a kill value of seven at range zero, and it fires burst, semi, or auto. Now, with an auto weapon, I get to roll more dice, but it doesn't have spray. So regardless of how many I roll, I'm only going to affect one reticle. He's going to make an attack on the enforcers. He got past their cover, and that's a great roll, two tens and a nine. That will inflict a kill, and of course what happens when we do that is if there's a suppressed token on a hostile, remember we actually flip it to a kill before we add a new token to the hostile. Now, he's got three actions, so I'm going to go ahead and take another shot at these enforcers. And again, I'm going to shoot and burst. I didn't hit my reload value, so that's good. Um, my reload value for this weapon is 2, so I got lucky again there. The 7 is sufficient for another kill if I get past cover, which the 4 does. So that's going to eliminate those hostiles. And it's going to give 2 more XP to Stuart. I see why he started with the XP to begin with. He's good. And he is out of his 3 actions, but now we control the location until comes time to reinforce, of course. And now I'm going to go ahead and move other soldiers in. I have another non-player soldier. He is Martin. 
Now, Martin has an M14 rifle, and he's also got three hand grenades. And he has the makeshift skill as well. In addition, he's got a plus one to his hand-to-hand. -hand. He's a good card for six points. That four movement value, I really like. Hand-to-hand um, -hand comes into play a lot with some of the newer objectives where you have to capture um, particular targets. Some of the new stealth rules that are going to be in the, the Night Fighting Warfighter expansion will make take advantage of that as well. And the two cover is okay. The drawback to him, and one of the reasons that he's only six points, is he only gets one action. And I'm going to spend that action to move him into the nearby river. Now, our last soldier is a squad soldier. This is Lace. He also only gets one action, but he does have two wounds. And he starts with two XP as well. I guess I forgot about that. I have those handy, though. And he's got a movement value of three and a cover of three. Uh, range zero kill is seven, so that's as good as the F-88 rifle at range zero. And at five points, he's a steal with a three movement value and a three cover. So we'll go ahead and expend his action and move him in to the nearby river as well. So everybody's moved. All our actions have been used, so we're just hanging out by the river. And it is time to go into the hostile turn. And the hostile turn, of course, starts with the reinforcement draw. And we have a reinforced value of 0 to 2. So there's pretty good odds we're going to see a hostile here. It is a 1. Now this hostile is Jittery Gunman. The hostiles in the African Warlords deck have some great uh, theme to them. Now, for the Jittery Gunman, there are two reticles. They have text on there that says that you discard them if a hostile card in their location is eliminated. So, strength in numbers and their morale is not high for them. So let's see who they target. They are going to target my squad soldier, number four, Lace. And then they're going to go ahead and make their attack roll. They have two reticles, so they on a five or less they'll miss. A six to eight will be one wound, and a nine or better will be two. They're going to roll a single die at range zero is when they attack. Against Lace, he's actually got the best cover of the squad. I don't have any action cards that will uh, give me any defense, so I'm going to hopefully get lucky, and if not, then Stewart's got his first aid kit. Wow, that is a flat-out two-wound kill. So just like that, Lace is eliminated. That is not the way I hoped it went, of course. And Lace does not have the mateship skill, so we're not going to benefit from that. That was a very unlucky turn of events for me. But it happens. And then we remove suppression counters, which there are none in play, and we advance the mission counter. So we've got 10 turns left, and we're down one man. This may be tougher than I thought it was going to be. Apparently these elephants are precious to the African warlord. All right, so I need to do a couple of things. First things first, I'm going to play a snapshot card and take a crack at those jittery gunmen there. Now, that lets me perform, being my player soldier, um, an attack by spending an action, or I can upgun it with XP so any soldier can do it. And so I am going to upgun it. I'm going to spend one XP from Stuart to let Martin make the attack. And this isn't a ranged attack or a close combat attack, it's just any attack. So he's going to toss a grenade at those guys. That was not uh, something that we wanted to see happen. Now, for a grenade, I'm actually going to roll four dice. It's got a penetration of one, so a two will get past their cover. And it's explosion four, so each die, each of the d10s counts. The kill value is six. So that is not enough. They must have been behind a rock because that one with a penetration of one from the grenade means I only get two. However, if either or is successful, it becomes a suppress. So these guys are going to be suppressed, and I'm down one grenade, and I still have hostiles in my location. All right, at this point, I need to do 
a discard draw action. So I'm going to use one action from Bailey to draw four cards. I'm going to hang one of those other two that I have because I like them. Unfortunately, I did not get any location cards. So now we're at the river and we're stuck unless I use one more action to discard and draw. Except I have my hydration pack. And that lets me draw one card or gain one party counter. And I can use uh, six times in a mission. I'm going to use it once right now to draw another card. And this is, in fact, a location. So we'll take a look at that. Oh, my goodness. It is a sun-baked robe. But we need to keep moving. So it is one action to play. It's got a four hostile value. And it's Byron is hot. Eight plus. That is brutal. You know, I just don't think I want to put that into play yet. So I'm going to do a discard and draw. I'm going to discard reloading. Oh my goodness. On point and follow me. I'm going to discard three cards. And I really like follow me um, because it reduces the entrance cost if you inflict a suppress or a kill. So I'm going to discard three to draw three. And I got another location. And that is a relief. But I'm out of actions. Now this one is a large village. It is free to play. It's four plus and you always draw for reinforcements. But the reinforce value is zero one. So I think I can live with that. I'm going to go ahead and put the large village into play. And when I do, I will draw hostiles. Now, for our squad value, fortunately, the village only has one uh, hostile value. And so it is a panicky ambusher. He costs two. So then we always draw for hostiles for that location. I like the low entrance cost. Um, I'm not really, really fond of that. Always reinforced, but hopefully we can get through there and get out before it becomes too big an issue. And to do that, I'm going to play a move out card to have Bailey move for free to that location. And then I'm going to play a snapshot card to have him go ahead and take a pop at the Panic Ambusher. Now the Panic Ambusher is another one of those thematic cards. Oh, wait a minute. Let's move him back, because when you draw the Panicky Ambusher, you place him in the targeted location. So he's going to go in the location we're in, because he's going to target Stuart, my soldier number three. And I can pay two XP or place one Suppress on each soldier in the location. And then you discard him if his attack does not inflict a wound. So when and if he attacks us, if he doesn't inflict a wound, then he's discarded. And he's not a great shot. He misses on a six or less. But on a seven, he does three wounds. So I really don't want to leave him laying around. Go ahead and take that snapshot and that move out back. As the situation has changed, I will play the snapshot. Also, I am going to pay the two XP from Stuart to keep him from suppressing all my soldiers here. I'm really liking Stuart. He's a non-player soldier, for those of you who are taking notes. So you might want to put him in your squad. He's pretty handy. Alright, so I will play the snapshot. And I will take a pop at the Panicky Ambusher. I roll two dice if I'm doing Burst Fire, which I'm going to. And I'll kill in a six, but his cover is four. However, I'm aggressive. In fact, I'm double aggressive. When I declare an attack, I discard an action to add one to my defeat cover roll. Discard an action card. Um, or in this case, a location card that works as an action card. I don't like that Sunday road. We're not going that way. Because I'm also going to play a steady aim, which lets me add two to my attack roll. So I'm plus two to attack and plus one to cover. Not good enough on the cover, but good enough on the attack to suppress him. These guys are just throwing bullets out there. They need to aim a little bit better. 
He's range zero also. And so if I go ahead and move into the village, which I'm going to, I'll play the move out for Stuart, or Bailey rather. Then they're not going to attack me next turn. They're going to be moving to get to me. So I'm kind of ignoring them. They're not as big a threat as they like to think they are. And then I have Stuart. Stuart's got plenty of actions. He's got three. And so he'll be able to take a couple of shots and move. In fact, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to spend one action to have him shoot with his um, F-88. And F-88, we're going to use burst fire, so we'll get three dice. And we're going to target that panicky ambusher because he's very devastating if he does hit. Uh, the three does not get past his cover. That is going to get real annoying real fast. So I'm going to spend another action to make another attack. We didn't hit our reload value, so we're good. All right, so the three also doesn't get past cover, and we're reloading. So Stuart's got one action left. All right, I'm going to put Stuart on hold for a minute, and I'm going to go to Martin. Now, Martin has... Uh, an M14 rifle, which is worst when it's at range zero, and it has a bipod that can be deployed that'll give it range two, but it's pretty decent at range one. And I am going to actually play the move out card for Martin to move to the large village and then target the panicky ambushers with the rifle. The rifle's got a Penetration value of one, but it only gets one die. I need a seven for this roll. So I get through the cover, but I do not succeed in killing him. And that's all right, because if I get off of this location, which I'm going to do by playing the move out card, I already did move him, and then the action to attack. Stuart's got one action left, and he is going to move to the large village also. So we're going to stop reinforcing the nearby river. And then we're going to move into the hostile phase, it looks like, because everybody has used all their actions. And we're running out of uh, option. So in the hostile phase, the first thing we do is reinforce the large village as a reinforced value of 0 to 1. And this is machine gun cart, which is 2. A value of two, so we're not going to put that into play. Now, that's a nasty card, too. It's penetration, too. It's immobile, and uh, soldiers can't leave that location while it's there. So I'm glad we don't have to deal with that. And then we're going to remove... Uh, oh, no, then we'll do our attacks. We have none, because everybody's suppressed. And they don't have range. Now they'll close range, except they don't, because they're completely suppressed. And then we'll remove a suppressed token from each of them. And that will end a hostile turn that wasn't near as devastating as the last hostile turn. And we'll reset our actions and advance the timer to nine. Now, I haven't forgotten that during the soldier turn, um, I can move the timer, counter one space forward to draw a location card. I'm not there yet, but I might get there. I'm down to one action card in hand. So the first thing I'm going to do is use one of Bailey's actions to draw five. All right, so I did not draw a location card, and I really want another location. So I am going to advance my timer by one, which I get from the mission card, um, working with locals. That lets me just flat out draw a location card, and hopefully this will get us to the elephants. That's a hostile. We'll see who that is in a minute. All right, so this location is a river bend. It's one action to play. It's a nature card. It adds two to hostile attack and defeat cover rolls against soldiers in this location. But it has no reinforced value. Its entrance is only two. And it's only three uh, XP worth of hostiles in the location. It's got a, also has a two 
hand to hand cost. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. And I think I'll play it with an action from Stuart, who has plenty of actions to spare. Oh, and when I play, let's draw our hostiles. Three XP worth of hostiles. Let's see who that was I accidentally drew. There's a gunman and crew. They are plus three or plus one to entrance cost, depending on the number of wounds they have on them. They're penetration two. And, um, oh, but when you inflict an, a kill on this hostile, you can pay one XP to discard the card. I like that because I have a plan. And then that's only two. We need three. Oh, this is a hit squad. This is nasty. They are three XP. They do have the malfunction keyword, which is good. And then their penetration two, they have cover one at range zero as opposed to their cover three, which is also good. That is just downright ugly. There are some really bad hostiles. There's some not as threatening hostiles in this location, but there are some that are just, you know, not anything you want to mess with. So let me draw their targets. The gunman and crew are going to target Stuart. Apparently they've heard of him. And then the hit squad is also going to target Stuart. My goodness, he must have been here before. I made some enemies. So the next thing I'm going to do is have Bailey take an action to use the grenade launcher on his carbine. And I am going to target the hit squad with a rifle grenade. Now the rifle grenade is four dice. It's penetration one, and it'll kill at range one on a six. So it's not, it's not yeah, that's as good as a regular grenade. For some reason, I thought we were gonna need a grenade would kill on the four. So we're gonna target the hit squad with the rifle grenade, penetration one. And to avoid taking chances, I'm going to play this prepared fire card, and I play that when I declare an attack. I can treat my defeat cover roll as a six. I'm just not going to mess with the cover this turn. I'll roll it anyway. It's, it's fun. Look at that. That is three dead hostiles already. Seven. Good. So the rifle grenade takes out the hit squad. That was beautiful. And I get three XP for my trouble for Bailey. And I never forget to take the XP. Because if you do, then you don't have them when you need to pay those up gun costs. So the hit squad is eliminated. And Bailey is out of actions. So we're going to spend another turn in the river bend, but that's a, a large village. Alright, so I still have the gunman and crew to deal with. And I'm going to have Martin spend his action make an attack on them. He only gets one action. I don't have a snapshot. I wish I did because he could deploy that bipod. Oh no, that's a very range to attack, so it won't matter. So what I'll do instead is play a steady aim to add two to his attack roll. Now since he's not the player soldier, I don't think I can do that for him. So instead I'm going to play a combined fire card. I'll double check. Maybe you can because it doesn't say you uh, like those, it says play me a prayer and attack roll. It's, I'm going to err on the side of caution. This says all soldiers add one or two if you upgun, which I'm going to, with one XP from Bailey to add two to their ranged attack rolls this turn. So with the M14 rifle, it is semi auto with a single shot. It's got a penetration of one. I need a seven, but a five will get me there with a plus two. And it doesn't. However, that is a suppress and a shame. And that is Martin's action. And in the back of my mind, I am aware that I am letting hostiles stack up behind me. And that's less than ideal. I am going to have to spend one action from Stuart to reload his F-88 from the last time he attacked. He's got one action left, but I used one of his actions this turn to play the river bend. And I'm going to make a ranged one burst attack 
against the gunman crew. Because if I can inflict one kill, I can pay the XP to get rid of them. I did not, because of that cover roll of one, the kill doesn't happen, but it is another suppress. And I am out of actions again. I don't feel like I've made the best decisions that turn. But it is what it is. Oh no. So we're going to go into the hostile phase. First thing we're going to do is reinforce. And we're only going to reinforce for the large village. We're there. But we'd reinforce anyway. Because it says always draw for reinforcement. It's got 0 to 1 for its reinforce value. And we drew a hostile. Of 1 XP. Now this is bunched gunmen. If a soldier's attack inflicts one or more enemy kills on this hostile, the soldier gains one action. There are five reticles on that card. They are ranged zero, and they are going to target my player soldier. And then the hostiles are going to attack. So we'll do the bunched gunman first. They will miss on a two or less. They'll do one wound on a three to eight. And two wounds on a nine or better. So they get a single die. They're attacking Bailey. Bailey has cover of one, so he's going to wind up suppressed regardless. Let's go ahead and do their attack. So they got a four. And that's going to be one wound on Bailey. Could have been worse. And then the gunman and crew are targeting Stuart. And they attack it 0 to 1. They are going to be rolling for the 2 1 column. Which means on a 5 or less. They'll miss. A 6 or better they'll do one more. Stuart has a cover of 2. They got through. And they did a wound. So he's down to 2 actions now with that 1 wound. And then I will have these soldiers move. See, this is where it's catching up with me. Because I didn't eliminate these hostiles before. And then I'll remove a suppression from each. My bad decisions are coming back to haunt me. And then I'm going to advance the mission timer one. So at this point, I can activate the... I can't act. Well, I could. That would be foolish. Um, activate the location. Stuart has a first aid kit, so I could put Bailey in better shape. But now is not the time to be doing first aid. Now is the time to be doing uh, taking care of enemies. I need parts, so I'm going to discard two of the four I have in hand, which will allow me to draw three. Now I forgot to make my environ hot rolls on that last turn, so I'm going to do that right now at the start of the turn. Um, it is a 4 plus, so for Bailey, he's good. Martin is also good. And Stewart is good. These officers are used to the hot weather, I guess. That's good. And then I'm going to use my hydration pack for the third time, I believe, and draw another card. Alright, this is a good time to uh, draw these cards. First thing first is I'm going to play a combined fire card and I am going to upgun it with an XP from Stuart to add two to all my range attack rolls for my soldiers. That being said, I have a lot of decisions to make. Alright, so the jittery gunmen are not going to be attacked first. I'm going to go for that panicky ambusher and have him attacked by Bailey with his M203. Now, I'm plus two to the attack rolls from the combined fire, but Bailey's aggressive. So I'm going to discard Follow Me to add two to his attack roll, which is what Aggressive lets me do. And then I'm going to discard Reloading to use Aggressive 2, which lets him add one to his defeat cover roll. And so I'm going to make a burst attack with two dice to take out that panicky gunman. Because I think the situation may not be as dire as it is. Combined fire gives me two. Aggressive gives me two. And then steady aim 
is going to give me another four because I'm going to upgun it with another XP from Stuart who's down to one XP. So that gives me plus eight to this attack roll. I'm just, I really want this ambush to be gone. The two becomes a three. Does not get past the defeat cover. But it does suppress him. Um, this might be a case of tunnel vision, but I'm going to attack him again. Um, and I'm going to play another steady aim. I'm not going to up down it and give me plus four total from steady aim and combined fire. To make a burst attack against the panicky ambushers. I'm not going to add the plus two. I'm going to discard that to use aggressive two to give me a plus one to recover. cover. That's more like it. So I get through that cover and I get a kill. Now, when you kill the panicky gunman, um, it affects the jittery gunman because you discard the jittery gunman if a hostile card in their location is eliminated. And that's what I was trying to do was kill two birds with one stone. So that succeeded. I spent more cards on it than I should have. No doubt. That will come back to haunt me. But for now, I'm alright with it. That was two attacks from Bailey, so he's out of actions, which means we're spending another turn in this uh, village. We're not getting done what we need to get done. And then I'm going to have... Martin's got that great rifle for range one and two attacks. Not that great for range one, but he's got a grenade. And he's going to toss an F1 grenade at the bunched gunman. They are cover zero, so that's good. Sixes will kill. Um, that's two kills. A combined fire doesn't count because it's not a ranged attack. So that's two kills on the card. And I get to roll one more die. So two kills on the card. However, that card says that if a soldier's attack inflicts one or more kills on that hostile, he gains the one action. So he's going to throw his last ring at them, too. He's just lobbing them in. It's baseball season. Go Rangers. We'll make that attack again with a grenade. That's two more kills, and I get one more guy. That's it. That worked out great. If I hadn't had the camera rolling, nobody would believe it. Those hostiles are gone. And Martin's going to get an XP. However, Martin is out of grenades. Now I'm feeling a little better about this mission. Oh, I forgot to give Bailey 2 XP for the Panicky Ambushers. I'm glad I caught that because, as you can see, you can burn through XP pretty quick. And that leaves Stuart. <coughs> and Stuart has two actions now because of the wound. Took him down to two. I'm going to have him go ahead and make a burst attack on the machine gun crew at range one. I need an eight to hit, and I get three dice for it. They're cover two, and this gun has no penetration value. I got one, well, I get one kill, which is great, because this card says, when you inflict a kill um, on this hostile, I can pay one XP to discard the hostile. I'll take the XP from Martin, because I'm used to having it on the steward. I don't want to do it out. Now, when I discard the hostile, I do not get any XP for it. But getting XP is not the overall goal of the game here. We're trying to save these elephants. And then I'm going to have Stuart use his last action to use his first aid kit on Bailey. So I'm going to discard a bandage. And I'm going to attempt to uh, patch him up. I need a... On a six or better, uphill one. So that doesn't happen. But now the wound has been treated. And this is one of my favorite rules in Warfighters, where the wounds work. I mean, it's not working to my advantage right now. But the fact that you can only treat a wound once in the field, I think is a great inclusion. I think it's a nice touch of realism um, in the game. And of course, I don't know for sure myself how realistic that it is. But it strikes me as realistic. So that is going to be the end of the player turn, of the soldier turn. Um, 
and I'm going to move into a hostile turn and draw for reinforcements only for the large village. So what do we get on a zero to one? And it's a one. We run into a patrol. It says place an objective. Um, so they start in the objective. These guys are out guarding. And they will move um, toward their target, who is Bailey. My fire card goes away. And they'll do that in just a minute because they attack, they don't have range, then they move. And that will end this hostile turn and will advance the counter to through six. I really need to get to the objective. I've only got two turns to clear out the hostiles from it. Now at the start of the soldier turn, I remember my environ rolls. We'll check for that first. So for Bailey, he fails the roll, so I'm going to use a hydration pack. That'll leave me two users of it now to gain a hearty pot counter. I'm not going to do that. I forgot. I want to introduce this other card, the Desert Acclimated card. Um, it lets you discard a card to add three to your roll. So I'll do that instead for the sake of uh, demonstration purposes. And then I'm going to roll for because that's a skill that he has. That's the skill from the Africa set that I was talking about earlier. And then I'm going to roll for Martin. Martin is good. And Stuart is good. They don't care. I guess Bailey, you know, getting shot. You know, softens you up just a little bit in the moment. I'm sure it'll make you tougher in the long run. And that gives us, we've got six turns left. To go and rescue the elephants. I have no cards, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend an action to draw five cards. So I am going to use that other action to move into the location. It's got a cost of two, so I'll actually have Stuart move in there first and play on point, which is um, play when you or any soldier if you up it, which I'll do with an XP from Bailey. Are the first to enter location after you discard to enter for permanently reduce its entrance cost by two. So he's going to move in. Actually, I'm going to save that for the elephants because that's got a higher entrance cost. I will go ahead and discard the reloading card to pay the entrance cost for Bailey to go to the river bend. He is out of actions, but he has a snapshot card. So I'm going to go ahead and take a pop at the patrol for burst attack. Gets past their cover, but it does not do a kill. So I will suppress the card with one. Then I'm going to use an action from Stuart to move him to the location. And then he is going to make an auto attack with his remaining action against that same card. Gets past the cover and does. Well, it's just going to be one kill because we already have suppress on there and it's a burst attack. Not a spray attack. Which means I'm going to have Martin stick behind and lay down some covering fire from back from there because that location is going to reinforce regardless. So it's not a detriment to have a soldier there. <clears throat> and then he's going to take a shot with his M14 rifle. It is a. Uh, this one die is seven. We'll do a kill. It's penetration one. That's a nine. So that will do the second kill on those hostiles. And they are eliminated. And Martin gets another XP. He's learning quick. Interesting, I say that there is another skill in the Australian set called Fast Learner that a person with a skill gains one XP for each. Uh, Extra XP. He's trying to kill a hostile with a value greater than two. And then there's a fast learner two, which they gain an extra XP when they kill a hostile with a value of uh, zero. So that is it. Those actions went quickly this turn. So we're going to move into the hostile turn. 
We're only going to reinforce for the large village. It always reinforces. Riverman has a reinforced cost of none, and I have no soldiers in the other locations. So, this one I got lucky. It's an officer and crew, but their XP value is three. So, we're good. We're hostile free this turn. We'll advance the turn counter one. At this point, I think it's time to activate the objective. So I'm going to activate the objective on turn five. And when I do, I'm going to draw six XP worth of hostiles. But I'm feeling good. I got a couple more grenades in my grenade launcher. I think we can do this. Uh, it's going to be trained gunners. They can be evaded for two XP. They uh, target the highest value, uh, which will be my player soldier. Just grab his token here. I'll go ahead and mark it just to remind me. Well, I ponder on evading them. I need four more values for the hostiles for my XP. A close. Close IED. My goodness. Play 3 XP or put a suppress on each soldier. That's an event. That's what that is. I am going to pay 3 XP, one from each of my soldiers. To keep that from happening. However, that means I don't have to deal with a hostile. And then I need one more. So anything will do. Also, train gunners. So this just got real interesting. And the reason is because I can evade those gunners. And when you evade, you uh, pay the XP cost to discard the hostile. In this case, two. You don't get XP for the hostile, but you discard them, and that's okay. Um, actually, I'm going to do that because these guys have had it pretty rough getting in here. So I only have three XP left. I'm going to pay two and discard one of those. And then all I have to do, and I have two turns to do it, is eliminate the hostiles on the objective. And this is not an on-site objective, so I don't have to be on it when I do it. And so I'm going to use my rifle grenade. I've got two of them left. Spend one action. I'm going to spend the first action to draw. Because you just never know. I'm going to discard two. Yeah, two. I'll discard good columns and take cover to draw three. Or four, rather, because I have one. I got a location. All right, so none of those cards help me. And that's all right. Because I have my grenade launcher, I'm going to spend on my other action to make a grenade attack. They have a cover of two. I have a penetration of one from the grenade. I get four dice. Uh, so I'm going to suppress, even though I just get a one on the die. I'm going to kill if I get uh, six or better. And just like that, uh, not super dramatic, but these Aussies, they're pros. And... That takes out that hostile, so the hostiles on the objective card are eliminated, and we have successfully completed the mission. We lost lace, unfortunately, but we did manage to save the elephants. That turned out pretty good.